Hello and welcome to my Season 4 Dragonflight Resto Shaman Mythic Plus Guide. I expect that Shaman will be a solid healer in Season 4, as it has been for most of the expansion. I ended up pushing Shaman further than any other healing spec in Season 3, and I find this spec to be a ton of fun and a really, really good choice for players who do a lot of pugging. The pros of Shaman would be its massive utility kit, which includes bloodlust and lots of answers for a variety of affixes, as well as the best healer kick in the game, really strong array of healing cooldowns to handle any situation, a self-res, and good survivability. The cons of Resto Shaman would probably be its lack of a true external defensive cooldown, some mana issues, and sort of lowish damage output unless you're allowed to just stand still and free cast. In this guide for Resto Shaman, we'll talk about talents, your tier set, your healing and damage rotation and how to use your utility, so check out the timestamps if you're looking for something specific. In Season 4, Shaman will be getting back its Season 1 Tier Set bonus. The 2 Set bonus, while Healing Stream Totem and Cloud Burst Totem is active, your chance to critically strike is increased by 10%. The 4 Set bonus, your critical heals have 215% effectiveness instead of the usual 200%. Be honest, none of the Shaman tier sets were super exciting this expansion, though this one is definitely the best. It's not going to really affect how you play the spec at all though, but instead kind of reward you for playing the spec properly more or less. 10% increased crit with Cloud Burst Up is going to passively help with mana for the Resurgent Talent as well. As for stats, you want to prioritize Critical Strike over Versatility, over Haste, over Mastery. Crit has synergy with that Resurgence talent and gives you mana back when heals crit. Versatility is going to give you passive healing and damage increases. Stacking Verse is also one of the reasons why Shaman is pretty beefy healer in Mythic Plus as well. So sometimes people ask about the best race for a class, and my default answer is that it really doesn't matter too much, and I'd more favor picking something you don't mind staring at for hundreds of hours over worrying about what's going to be the best in gameplay because it really doesn't make a huge difference. But since some people will ask, in my opinion, the best races for Shaman are Dwarf or Dark Iron Dwarf. The ability to remove a debuff off yourself for free can be seriously amazing, and there are some nasty bleeds and debuffs in Season 4. So if you're really looking to min-max by choosing the best race, my answer is Dwarf or Dark Iron Dwarf. When it comes to talent builds, there are sort of two main paths you can look at, Chain Heal Path and the Riptide Path. Being that Chaman is getting the Season 1 tier set back, it was already the more popular build of the two. I'm going to focus mainly on the Chain Heal build. This is what it looks like in general. Depending on weekly affixes, you can swap some things around, which we'll get to in a second. The most important ones to talk about here are Primordial Wave and its supporting talents, as well as Tide Ringer and High Tide. Primordial Wave puts a Riptide on someone and heals them a bit initially, but more importantly, the next healing wave you cast is going to cleave onto everyone who has a Riptide on them. Coupled with the Undulation talent, this can be a really strong tool for AoE healing. Tidebringer and High Tide empower your Chain Heal, but it's important not to lean too hard on this spell, as if you cast it without these buffs, it's a pretty bad spell that will chew through your mana quickly. We'll get more into that on the healing section. There are a couple of minor variants you'll want to consider depending on the affixes. During Afflicted Week, you're going to want to be sure to pick up Poison Cleansing Totem for every dungeon. This talent is incredibly OP against Afflicted as it will clear two Afflicteds on its own. You don't even have to target anything. During Incorporeal Week, you'll want to grab Hex so you can help with that affix. During Entangled, Gust of Wind will make the affix a little easier to deal with, but I'd say it's optional. I don't usually bother with that one, but that one's up to you. So I talked earlier about the Riptide build, so I want to make sure I include it. The big difference here is that you're dropping Tidebringer and High Tide in favor of Ancestral Awakening and Primal Tidal Core. This is a much more passive healing style. You'll get passive healing from Ancestral Awakening and Primal Tidal Core will help keep Riptides running on your team all the time. With this build, you pretty much ignore Chain Heal completely. I personally don't run this often because I find that it lacks the AoE burst healing of a Chain Heal build, and as such, I don't have as much practice with it, but it does get run in some very, very high keys, so it's totally viable and worth a try if you're interested. All right, let's get into the meat of the guide and talk about how to play the spec. We'll start with our basic healing rotation and then move into cooldowns. I always like to layer my rotations, starting with the basic maintenance spells, and then what you'll cast for light healing and moving into heavier damage scenarios. 
For Shaman, your first layer of healing is Earth Shield, Healing Rain, and Riptide. These spells should be up as much as possible and lay the foundations of your healing. Earth Shield should have 100% uptime on yourself and the tank by default. There are some niche scenarios where you might want to put Earth Shield on a DPS if you know they're going to be taking a lot of damage soon to take advantage of the 6% damage reduction and healing bonus, but for 98% of your life, it will be on yourself and the tank. Next comes Riptide. You can have a lot of Riptides out at once, and unless you are in some situation where there's just no damage going out, so you're blasting DPS nonstop, you generally want to throw these out on cooldown because they have a ton of talent synergies. Likewise, Healing Rain should be up as close to 100% as possible. It also benefits from talents and doubles as one of your main sources of damage through the Acid Rain talent. You usually want to open a pull with Healing Rain, and because of its annoyingly long cast time, I sometimes use Natured Swiftness to drop a quick one down at the start of a pull if I don't think I'll need it for anything else. So when light damage starts to come in, you really have two buttons to look at, Healing Surge and Chain Heal. Healing Surge is a pretty chunky single target heal, and Chain Heal is a great AoE heal for two plus targets, granted that you're casting it with the High Tides buff up. I repeat, Naked Chain Heals are a really lousy spell that will chew up your mana if you go overboard with them. And even though it's kind of a cooldown, I'm going to put Cloudburst Totem here as well. Anytime you're going to do a moderate amount of healing, it's usually worth dropping one of these down. They'll save the healing you do while they're up, and then burst for 80% of the amount spread between your party when the time is up or when you choose to recall the totem. In the beginning, just kind of putting the totem down when you're doing healing and letting it do its own work is fine. Over time, you'll learn that timing your own cloudburst can be huge for AoE healing, but that can really only come with experience. Just make sure that, especially when you're about to do major amounts of healing, cloudburst goes out first whenever possible. So let's get into cooldowns, as Shaman has many of them. Let's begin with Primordial Wave, as this is kind of a mini cooldown that will often get paired with other things. Primordial Wave will put a Riptide on your target and do a small initial heal, but then the next healing wave you cast will cleave onto every target with Riptide. So this is a situation where you're rewarded for having Riptides on as many people as possible. This is also really the main use of Healing Wave spell in general. This heal can be really big when your Undulation buff is up, and if you pair it with something like Cloudburst and Ancestral Guidance, you're talking a massive AoE healing cooldown. Take advantage of this as you're dropping three talent points here and the spell is up every 30 seconds. Ancestral Guidance is one of my favorite healing cooldowns in the whole game. For the next 10 seconds after using it, 25% of your damage and healing gets spread to three people around you. So popping this with your Primordial Wave, your Stormkeeper, just a couple instant cast chain lightnings, or just tossed out a couple high tide chain heals will top your group off really fast. Since it's on a two minute cooldown, you're usually best off using this as your first healing CD on a boss fight, as you'll typically get another use out of it before the boss drops. Ascendance is another great AoE healing cooldown that duplicates 80% of the healing you do onto other party members as well as doing a nice burst of healing when you first pop it. Like Ancestral Guidance, it's not the cooldown itself but the healing you do after popping the cooldown that makes the health bars go up, so it's still important to follow your solid healing rotation after popping both of these spells. Spirit Link Totem is a really unique cooldown that can be completely OP and absolutely negate mechanics entirely in some instances and can be relatively useless in others. Spirit Link Totem basically balances the HP of everyone inside its circle. It's really hard to die while inside Spirit Link. That means it's awesome to save an individual who's about to die or several low health people if you got some higher health people mixed in with them, but not great say if everyone's already low. It also has range limitations as the circle isn't that gigantic, so it's best used when the party is already stacked. An example from Season 3 would be Eridicron's Extinction Blast. Dropping this on everyone just totally nullified that. You'll want to have some plan of how you're going to get everyone healed back up again once you've dropped it with the Spirit Link Totem. We've also got Healing Tide Totem, which for a 3 minute cooldown is 
pretty lackluster. It will do some nice passive AoE healing, but it can't really be relied on to survive anything too dangerous or bursty. Definitely worth throwing out to help with AoE damage though. So on to the DPS rotation. The Shaman damage rotation is really simple. Shaman aren't outstanding damage dealers, but if you're allowed to free cast, you can hold your own. On single target, you want to maintain healing rain, maintain your flame shock dot on your target, and then prioritize lava burst over lightning bolt. Make sure you're spending your free cast lava burst procs as well. For AoE, you just want to maintain healing rain and spam chain lightning. But let's talk about utility to wrap things up here because this is what really made me love pugging with Shaman back in Season 3. Wind Shear is the best healer kick in the game. 12 second cooldown, 30 yard range. You need to be landing kicks and helping yourself out as the healer. Thunderstorm is a knock up on a 25 second cooldown for stops. Get in there and stop some damage from going out. Not to mention Capacitor Totem on a 1 minute CD. I can't stress enough how awesome it is to have this much CC from the healer spot. Learn to make use of it. You'll be making your life so much easier. You've got some great ways to stay alive as well as a Resto Shaman. You essentially live with a 6% damage reduction on you at all times with Earth Shield, not to mention that you stat heavily in Diverse for even more damage reduction. The Ancestral Vigor talent gives your healing targets 10% more health. You can use this to your advantage by making sure you've got this buff up on yourself when big damage is coming out. Your Earth Elemental can also give you a 10% HP buff and can be used similarly in a pinch as a great way to save a wipe if the tank goes down as well. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the guide, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're looking for any elements of my UI or any talent exports, check the description. Happy keying. See you next time.